Hello, this is Aaron with Yesterday's Games, and today, as you can see, we're playing some Open TTD again. Um, I've got a little map here, custom made. It's um, got three cities on it. Now they're not, um, you know, geographically correct, but if you're familiar at all with Fife uh, in Scotland, uh, there's the city of Cooper here, and Struther, and Crail. Um, so I'm gonna start off here right away uh, checking these three cities out um, we've got a little coastline up to the kind of the north area um, Crail which spans over onto a little uh, you know kind of a isolated piece of land there and Cooper down kind of inland um, there's a or there's I believe just one of every industry um, kind of surrounding these three cities but I wanted to do something um, a little bit different so we'll start again uh, as I did in my other tutorials with um, kind of the, the coal mine to power plant type of a setup um, but I I wanted to have kind of these three cities I thought this would be a really unique um, just a really unique scenario to try and do because most often people don't um, they do kind of you know huge maps and they've got you know quadruple lane you know trains going everywhere and I thought you know what if I didn't have enough room what if I could do that so um, starting off here I am uh, borrowing all the money I can which is uh, 600,000 um, and I'm gonna start out I think with a little train line because um, as you start out with um, coal lines like a coal to uh, the power plant that's kind of like easy money you just kind of set up a few trains to go in and out I'm thinking you know as I'm showing there with with the uh, mouse I want to kind of swing up into the right there's a little body of water that I want to cross with some bridges um, and then I can use those those same rails to connect my industries and I think I want to go in and, and truck kind of the last mile do some trucking into there so um, I'm choosing the type of station that I want for the power plant. Um, I'm going to do this one. It's a mineral unloader, uh, four tile length on this thing. And I'm going to put it right next to, I just, I look at five and I say, nah, 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 nah. four is going to be good. So we're going to place that right next to the power plant here. And that is going to, that is going to let me um, kind of start off this thing. Cause again, this is essentially easy money. Um, toggle so I can see through buildings it's my superpower you know um, and I'm gonna have a little track that just wraps right around the uh, power plant there so I can have kind of trains come in one side and continue straight out the other side this is called a row row station uh, now this land is quite a bit more expensive than it normally would be because um, there's uh, some farmland here and I'm having to buy that so I have to buy you know buy the farmland away from the farmer and then also buy the land and put some tracks on it and stuff so um, essentially I'm making a little station now this is just to this kind of southeast of Cooper and this train station is called Cooper East um, and for now it's gonna hopefully just be a coal coal station I don't want to really fuss around with having too much stuff and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to you know, level a little land out here. I'm putting some parallel tracks just to the east of this. Um, I'm going to bring it, bring this out, curve it around, and connect it straight into the tracks here. Um, I'm just, I'm not doing any fancy junctions. I'm just setting these up to be kind of a, essentially kind of just a straight connection where they they kind of um, I don't have any weird bridges or anything coming across there um, you know nothing nothing too strange um, and I do take a look at this and I, I think I decide that I want to switch these sides that are this is kind of gonna this is gonna choose which direction my my whole layout is gonna go so we see this uh, the one up to the top we can have trains going in but they're not going to be held up by trains that are coming out um, so I'm going to put my one-way path signals down because um, we want to uh, allow these trains to kind of you know come in and choose where they want to go um, fairly efficiently so there we go so I'm kind of uh, doing a, a decent job of going okay he's gonna go that direction he's gonna go 
this direction. Um, so my furthest away track is uh, kind of my right. You know, you, you pass the signals on the right is the direction that you need to go. So a little more land in the way, but I decided, you know, eh, it's all right. I can work with that. I'll come over diagonal. Um, so yeah, as I work this way around, um, this was, uh, I kind of figured this would be a, a fun, a fun way to do something a little different than again, these kind of the massive maps that, uh, you know, kind of, I always see that, you know, are, are very, very impressive, but, uh, I, I decided, you know, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty intense. Um, let's start with something, something small, something that, uh, would be a little different than normal. So a few cantilever steel bridges here going across uh, this little body of water. Um, there's just a little bit of farmland straight ahead from the tracks. And then I have my uh, coal, coal mine there. Um, so I'm going to bring the tracks up, jog them kind of diagonal just a little bit because I want to have a little bit of room away from this coal plant um, to kind of maneuver. Um, and again, I've got these uh, custom stations so they don't just all look like the same thing. And I'm kind of sizing it up, you know, do I go maybe to, you know, this is um, perpendicular to the tracks. And I'm trying to decide, okay, do I put them to the right of the mine, to the left of the mine? They're both perpendicular. Um, and I actually decide, you know, I think I want to put it um, parallel to the tracks, but with the coal mine in between. And this station, so different than the uh, different than the row row station I can just make this a, a terminus station because well you know it's because the biggest thing um, I don't have to like the trains don't have to come back out of this station like I'm only gonna probably have two trains maybe a few more but it's probably just gonna be the two trains working um, It'll, I, I can't put any more than I actually can. I, um, it'll have to be just the two trains where I can at max, you know, ideally one is in there filling where the other one unloads. And as the other one gets just about gets back, this other train is going to, is going to, you know, pop out and then they'll just kind of you know, be switching gears. But if one's fast enough, ideally what will what, happen is that they'll both just sit in there. One will take off. The other one will fill, the other one will come back, and then it'll just kind of, you know, have this nice tick tock as they go out. Um, and I won't have to worry about it at all. Like I said, these are fairly low amounts of traffic on the map, which, uh, which is really quite nice. Um, so we're going to put down a train depot so we can, we can finally get some trains moving on this map. And I'm, I'm uh, futzing around with kind of where I want to put this, but I decide, you know, hey, here, here will be nice. This is on the inlet side of the power plant station, and so um, I can get that. Uh, they can kind of get uh, serviced when we go in there. So I pick kind of a mid-level um, engine for this train uh, because I don't need anything uh, too terribly fast. So um, I count out there. So I believe. I believe it is one, two, three, four, five. There's seven cars and an engine. So um, you kind of, each car and the engine is a half length, um, is a half length of a tile in the game. So, you know, you can have a, a, if it's a four length station, I can have, you know, a half tile train and a, uh, so let's see here. So it looks like I've made a, a small mistake, um, which I will, which I've just realized. Um, I've done full load at the power plant, which is uh, not really ideal. I actually want to have full load um, for the mines, which makes a lot of sense. So there they go. So there's my two trains. Hear the little doo -doo as they uh, as they come out of the station there. Um, so I think I will kind of keep an eye on them, but as they as they go, we'll. Uh, I'll like to, I'd like to pop back and kind of see how they do for that um, later on. But for now, for now, I want to, I think, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this guy rolling in there just to make sure, because, you know, I messed up the orders earlier. So I want to make sure that he, uh, he does all right. So there we go. There's the coal. And then there we go. We can see that 5% and he'll, that'll start ticking up there pretty quickly um, as he starts to fill up. So 
we can pretty safely ignore those trains now. They're going to be just fine. So um, I think I'll pull this the tracks down f behind Cooper, um, kind of leading away from Cooper East there. And I'm going to add uh, my you know my one way signals in and pull and you know control and drag control and drag and that'll kind of space those evenly out kind of an auto spacing tool um taking another little pe peek at my uh, trains my first two little trains i want to make sure they're uh they're doing okay and and getting taken care of so um i want to start i think with cooper here um, i want to start setting up some pass a passenger service um in town and I'm taking a look at the roads, trying to decide, okay, what's going to be a good route for my um, for my kind of you know uh, trucks and buses and everything. Um, I briefly considered doing streetcars, but I think uh, I think maybe another city I'll do that. But for this one, we're gonna we're gonna try to do we're gonna try to do buses. Um, I couldn't roll in with mail and everything, but I think I'm gonna just start with buses because that's gonna be kind of the most straightforward way to start. Um, so there we go. So we're kind of, you know, uh, pressing X there to kind of see through the buildings um, so I can really see the road layout there. Um, uh, and I'm going to put down my first station, which is just going to be called Cooper. Now, if you hold control when you place one, it'll actually allow you to choose to attach it to another thing. So I've got essentially these Cooper. Um, Cooper stations here. So what I'll do is I'm going to put some other stations um, a little further out so I can kind of start an inner city bus line, intra city bus line rather. Um, so there we go, making a few roads up here. I want to have a nice little loop so my buses don't have to kind of hit that and then just go and turn around. So um, and I also decide, eh, might as well connect this up to um, I believe Anstruther was, was my bigger city there. Um, so I make a little bit of a little bit of a, a, a mess up here, but um, I don't notice it uh, right away. Um, that was a truck station rather than a bus station, so that is gonna um, I'm gonna have to go in and I believe either replace those or add in uh, some bus stations here. Uh, well, quite shortly. Um, so I'm kind of having a look around, trying to decide where I want to put these things. And then there we go. So we have Cooper Central. We have Cooper, and I believe it was. Uh, we'll, we'll look at what the other one was. Um, Cooper Heights. So I have Cooper, Cooper Central, and Cooper Heights. So um, there we go. We have my first coal train pulling into the station, unloading, unloading, and finally there. $10,232 for my uh, coal trains. Now, that's a fantastic amount of money for those things. They're going to be making their money back before long. So I'm getting the Whitcomb Double Decker Bus, and that's going to be my first my first guy. So um, this is right about when I'm giving him the orders to say, go to Cooper, and then go to Cooper Heights. And I'm going, oh, no. I can see on the little tag for Cooper Heights, um, you can see where... Uh, it's a little truck rather than a uh, than a bus, so uh, whoops, a uh, little bit of a misplay there, but um, should be just fine. I mean, this isn't gonna, there's not gonna be anything uh, troublesome about that. So um, I clear a little land so I can add in another uh, a bus depot to Cooper Heights. So now on there, actually, you can see a little kind of box truck and a little bus on there. So. Road vehicle is away. First, first one is there. Um, he's uh, working his way around those city streets, getting towards uh, kind of the the central Cooper, the Cooper bus station. So there we go. Everybody's all excited. The first bus has arrived in Cooper. Um, now I, I misjudge this a little bit. You know, this is a this is a city of 44,853 people. Now. Cities are, uh, don't, I mean, open TTD, they don't quite work, you know, the same as real cities. Um, lots of people want to take the bus here. So there's, uh, by the time that I get around to checking the, um, 
checking the uh, station here. Look at that. I've already got 250 passengers, and I realize, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a, a few buses, um, which is, uh, which is gonna be interesting. Uh, but we will, I'll get a nice balance of this here uh, shortly. So I have the timetable set up here to kind of autofill. Um, timetables are really important for kind of uh, road vehicles because you you absolutely need to have this set up because otherwise they're just going to stack up. Um, so I've got four, which uh, will actually also be woefully inadequate for the amount of uh, people that is are coming out of the city. Um, I go ahead and, and uh, turn one of those buses around there, um, even though that's a little bit redundant. Uh, when you clone a vehicle, um, if you want to have it, you can have it shared orders and timetable and everything. So that's really, really nice to have. Um, so oh, lots of people in Cooper, um, 411 passengers. I'm going to need, I'm going to need more buses. Um, so I'm kind of watching these things, waiting for that timetable to get filled in. Um, as you can see, I'm going to come over on autofill. I'm like, come on guys, let's hurry up. Let's get let's get this city uh, underway. All the people of Cooper demand it, um, and the city is growing. It just grew grew by a few people there. So, um, road vehicle one actually has broken down on his way, which is a bit of a bit of a disappointment. Um, so let's see. Here. There we go. We're gonna go and uh, what I like to do is pad the, the travel time just a little bit. Um, uh, he broke down so he took a little bit longer but um, I like to pad the time just a bit so they have enough things so if you can tr control click on the start date it'll actually distribute that to all of the um, all of the buses in in all the road vehicles um, oh man and I could see how 530 passengers oh. um, as long as people are getting picked up you're actually, you should be just fine. Um, I've read online that they, as long as there's consistent um, consistent service to a station, whether it's bus or train or whatever, um, as long as you're not leaving people kind of like waiting and waiting and waiting, your ratings will still be good. Um, I like to keep that kind of in good, you know, good balance. So I don't want to have uh, too many people waiting at the station if I can help it. Um, and I kind of I'm keeping an eye here. I'm trying to figure out what I can do. Um, now you saw like I just I destroyed a little fountain. Um, fountains are kind of uh, they're they're a waste of space. Like nobody lives there, and because tiles are so important in this game, you you eventually you want to kind of wait till you have good reputation with the city and just destroy some of those uh, fountains because they don't add anything functionally to the game. But I'd much rather that there be a, um, except they do affect like you can't have a building there, because there's going to be um, there's going to be just a fountain. Like it, the other, the buildings will actually contribute to passengers that will use your um, use your service. Now I went to destroy a little thing there, and the uh, I realized that Cooper uh, thinks I'm actually a little bit mediocre, uh, probably because I bulldozed some stuff in their town, which is not ideal. Um, so I'm going to, going to go in and add in another station to Cooper because it, it's honestly, it's so big. Um, there's so many passengers, I, I need the help. Um, so we'll go ahead in and we'll clone out. Um, I'm struggling to find a bus here. Click, there's another bus. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and I think clone another one here. Um, but he's, he's okay. There we go. Checking the timetable, checking the schedule. They're looking good. These guys are all full. We'll go ahead and I believe that brings us up to eight double-decker buses for Cooper. Now Cooper Heights is looking great. It has uh, you know no passengers. Uh, Cooper, huh? Cooper is a little uh, a little bit busy, um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's gonna you know we're gonna get that sorted out. Um, but. Anyhow, this is kind of wrapping up where I want to leave the first episode. Um, we've got a decent start. You know, we're, uh, we've only used about half of our money that we, lo we got loaned out. We have a nice coal train setup, and we've got a 
we're starting to get a handle on the uh, trouble with um, <laughs> with uh, Cooper. So um, come back to the next one and you can um, catch up with, uh, with the rest of this thing, see how Cooper's doing, and then I will start to connect the other cities and kind of grow it from there. But hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like down below if you haven't, and we'll catch you in the next one.